financial instruments. Financial instruments. Financial instruments is any contract that gives rise to financial assets of one entity and financial liability or equity instruments of others. Financial instrument is any contract that gives rise to financial assets of one entity and a financial liability or equity instruments of others. Examples of financial instruments are derivatives, uh, swap, options and swap, derivatives, options and swap. So those are the examples of financial instruments. So when we say derivatives, derivatives are financial instruments that derives their value from the changes in other items, e.g. the currency, foreign currency. They, uh, they derive their value from the changes in underlying item. Those are derivatives. So I told you that financial instruments, we said they are contracts that give rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity of another entity. Then what do we mean by financial asset? What do you mean by financial asset? Financial asset is any asset that is cash or an equity instrument of another entity. Any asset, financial asset, is any asset that is cash or an equity instrument of another entity. Examples of financial assets include, we have the trade receivables, we have options and shares, one head as investment. These are the examples of financial assets. So it includes the trade receivables, the options, and investment in shares. Then financial liability. Financial liability is any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or another financial asset to another. And any, any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or another financial asset to another. That is financial asset. Financial lab, I mean financial liability. Financial liability includes the trade payables, the venture loans, payable, and the redeemable preferences. Trade payables, the venture loans, uh, payable and redeemable preferences. These are examples, redeemable preferences. Irredeemable preferences is an equity instrument. So, now, that is financial liability. Then equity instrument, equity financial instrument is any contract instrument. It's any contract that evidences a residual interest in an asset of an entity after deducting all liabilities. Equity financial instruments, any contract that evidences a residual interest in an asset of an entity after deducting all liabilities. There are three standards on financial instruments. You have IES 32. IES 32, which deals with financial instruments. Financial instruments, presentations. IES 32, presentation, deals with financial instrument presentations. It covers the classifications of financial instruments into equity and liabilities. IES 32 covers 
the classifications of financial instruments into equity and liabilities. It also covers the presentations of a compound financial instruments. IS 32 covers the presentations of a compound financial instrument. And when we say compound, compound instrument, compound financial instruments, are those financial instruments that have both equity and liability components. They are financial instruments that have both equity and liability components. Examples are convertible, convertible loans or debenture. When you have convertible bonds, you know that they are compound instruments. So when you have a compound financial instrument, you have to segregate it into the debt and the equity component by discounting. So then the second standard is IFRS 7, which covers financial instruments, financial instruments disclosure. Disclosure. It covers financial instruments. Disclosure. Then we have IFRS 9, which is on financial instruments. It covers the recognition and the recognition of financial instruments. By the recognition, we mean to incorporate into the financial statements. Those items that meet the definition of an element and the recognition criteria. So that is recognition. When you incorporate the financial instruments in the financial statement, those ones that meet the definitions of financial instruments, when you incorporate them into the financial statement, that is recognition. But if they did not meet the definitions of financial instruments and the recognition criteria, so you remove them from the financial statement, the process of doing that is called the recognition the recognition. So that is IFRS 9. It also covers the impairment of financial instruments. Impairment of financial instruments. It also covers measurements of financial instruments. Measurement and of measurement of financial instruments. And it's as well cover hedging. Hedging, hedging instruments. How financial instruments can be hedged. So all are embedded in IFRS number nine, IFRS nine. So that is for that. So we want to start with IS 32 proper, which is all about presentations of financial instruments, that is financial instrument presentations. So now we want to talk about recognitions. That is my focus now is IS 32, financial instrument presentation, Financial instrument presentations. So, then we want to talk about recognition. Recognition of financial instrument. Recognition of financial instruments. Initial recognition, that is first time, when you want to recognize that financial instrument for the first time. So how should it be recognized? Recognition. Initially, financial instruments should be recognized at fair value. The fair value of that instrument. So you recognize it at fair value. So subsequent remailment. Subsequently, Subsequent remailment, financial instruments should be remailed and recognized at amortized cost. Amortized cost. So it should be recognized or remailed at amortized cost. So by amortized cost, that means you need to prepare amortization table. So which is initial value. Initial value plus the finance cost. Uh, let me say interest, because you can have financial assets or financial liabilities. So that's why I don't want to put finance cost. Minor interest, it could be interest. If it is financial asset, you receive interest. You can have interest received 
And if it is financial liability, you have interest paid. I mean, you have finance, I mean, interest income. If it is financial asset, interest income. And if it is financial liability, you have interest expense. Then minus interest, interest paid or interest received for financial asset. But for financial liability, you have interest paid. So financial asset, you have you receive income on assets. But for a liability, you have interest that will be charged as an expense, which is your finance cost. Or finance cost. But for a financial asset, you receive interest on it. Or you paid interest. Interest paid. Now, to prepare your amortization table, I want you to know that for the purpose of this, two different interest rates will be given. Interest rate. Two different rates will be given. One is effective interest rate. Effective interest rate. Interest rate. And the second one is the coupon rate. These are the two possible rates you will be given in the question. And at times you may be given one. But you have to know which one you are given. Where the second one is not given, you take that one to be 0%. The coupon rate is the rate that is attached to that instrument, the face rate of it. The face rate, you might have 10% dimension. That means the 10% is the coupon rate. You can have 5% redeemable preferences. That 5% is the coupon rate. The rate attached to that instrument is the coupon rate. And to calculate the amount of interest that will be received or paid, the interest that will be received or paid should be calculated at the coupon rate. I've told you that the face rate is the coupon rate. The interest that will be received our paid will be at the coupon rate. The, why the interest that will be charged as an income or expense should be at the effective interest rate. Effective interest rate. The one that should be charged as an income or finance cost as an expense finance cost or expense should be at the effective interest rate, while this one should be at the coupon rate. So whenever you are given, before I go into compound financial instruments, because there are further information I will need to provide for you to understand the comp compound financial instruments. So now let's look at the amortization table. Amortization table. Amortization table. Where, where it is, it, that is where the interest is payable in areas. Payable in areas. You have here, you have the opening balance. You have finance cost. Finance cost. In case of financial liability, you have finance cost. In case of financial asset, you have finance income or interest income. Then you have interest paid. Don't forget, I've told you that interest paid should be calculated at the coupon rate, while this one should be at the effective interest rate. Then after that, you have the closing, closing balance. Closing balance. The interest paid will be fixed throughout the period of the loans or the instruments. So that is for that. Where it is payable in advance. Where it is payable in arrears. It is assumed that the instrument is payable at the end of the period. That is where it is payable in arrears. But where it is payable in advance, that is to show that it is payable at the beginning of the period. So in that case, you have 
Yeah. Open a balance. You have interest paid. I mean, let me have the amount paid. Yes, let me have interest paid. Then we have finance costs. Then we have principal portion. After the payment of that interest, principal portion. So when you subtract the interest paid from the opening balance, you get the portion that relates to the principal. Then you have finance costs in case of financial liability. But if it is financial asset, you have finance income. Then you have closing balance. That is the amortization table. I told you that where it is payable in areas, it is payable at the end of the period, and where it is payable in advance, then that is to show that it is payable at the beginning of each of the period. So then you apply the amortization table. A company uses 5% loan notes at their nominal value of $20,000 with an effective interest rate of 5%. The loan notes are repayable at par after four years. What amount will be recorded as a financial liability when the loan notes are used? So, you have year. You prepare the amortization table. Table for the loan notes. Then you have year. The first year, the year it was EU. Let me, it's not stated. Year one, two, three, four. We have opening balance. Balance. The actual amount of the loan is $20,000. $20,000. After that, you have finance costs. Finance costs. I've told you that the finance cost will be at the effective interest rate. The finance cost should be calculated at the effective interest rate. If you look at the question, a company EU, 5% loan notes. This 5% is the coupon rate at the nominal value of 20,000 with an effective interest rate of 5%. The nominal, this is the effective interest rate. And the coupon rate too is 5%. So, that means interest paid too, which will be at the coupon rate. The coupon rate is 5%, the effective rate is 5%. The closing balance. Closing balance. So 5% of 20,000 will be 1,000. Interest paid too will be 5% of 20,000 too, which will also be 1,000. 20,000 plus 1,000 minus 1,000. You have to subtract the interest pay. That will still be 20,000. That means the closing balance will be 20,000 too. It is this finance cost, this is, it is this amount, the one calculated at the effective interest rate, that will be reported as an expense in the statement of profit or loss. The closing balance in year one will be the opening balance in year two. Then 5% of that will also be 1,000. Then 5% will be 1,000. Then the closing balance will be 20,000. Then the closing balance will be the opening balance here. The finance cost will be 1,005% of this. The interest paid too will be 1,000. The closing balance will be 20,000. Then the closing balance in year three will be the opening balance in year four. Finance cost will be 1,000 calculated as 5% of this. Then these loan notes, the loan notes are repayable at par after four years. So it will be repayable after four years. The amount that will be paid now in year four, the interest paid in year four should be 5% of this 20,000, which will also be 1,000. The interest will be paid plus the principal. The principal is 20,000. 20,000 plus interest of 1,000, the amount that will be repaid will be 21,000. 
20,000 plus 1,000 will be 21,000 minus 21,000. Then you have me. Then you are to... What amount will be recorded as a financial liability when these loan notes are issued? The amount that will be reported as financial liability, that is your statement of financial position, statement of financial position. Under non-current asset, uh, current, non-current liability. Non-current liability. We have financial financial liability. Liability. There are four years involved. We have years. Year one. Year two, year three, year four. 20,000 will be reported as non current liability in year one. In year two, 20,000. Then we also have current liability. We have financial liability. This 20,000 will be available for payment in year three. So then you have 20,000 in year three. In year four, you have me. That is the amount that will be reported in the statement of financial position. Example two. A company issues 20 million of 4% convertible loan notes at par on 1st of January 2009. Convertible loan notes is a compound financial instrument. By compound financial instrument, it means it has both the liability component and equity component. 4% convertible loan notes. This 4% is the coupon rate. And I've told you that the interest paid should be calculated at the coupon rate. At par on 1st of January 2009. The loan notes are redeemable for cash or convertible into equity shares on the basis of 20 shares per $100 of debt. At the option of the loan notes holder on 31 December 2011, similar but not convertible, not convertible loan notes carried an interest rate of 9%, the present value of $1 receivables at the end of the year based on discount rate of 4% and 9% can be taken as follows. This 9% is the effective interest rate. It is the effective interest rate. Whenever you are given a compound financial instrument, I've told you that you want to se segregate that instrument you want to se se separate it into a liability component and equity component. To do that, you have to identify the cash flows. The cash flows of compound financial instruments to discount, in order to get the liability component, will be one, annual interest payment. Annual interest payment calculated at the coupon rate. Calculated at the coupon rate, then, uh, amount to be repaid, amount to be repaid at the repaid uh, on maturity or at the expiration of the time period fixed by the agreement. So now this loan note now, the coupon rate is 4%. Then to calculate the cash flows now, you calculate the 4% of the loan notes, 4% the, uh, the annual interest, which is 4% of the 20, 20 million. 4% of the 20 million. That will give you the annual interest. So when you calculate that, of 20 million, And that will give us 800,000.
the annual interest that will be paid will be 800,000. 4% of 20 million. The loan notes are redeemable for cash or convertible into equity shares on the basis of 20 shares per 100 of debt. You don't need that. The information given there is to enable you to know that it is convertible. That those are the number of shares you can have in exchange for the loan notes. At the options of the loan notes holder on 31st December 2011, similar but not convertible loan notes carry an interest rate of 9%. This is the effective interest rate. It is the effective interest rate you use to discount it. That means this present value at 4%, which is the coupon rate, is not relevant. It is the present value of 9% that will be used because it is the effective interest rate you should use to discount it. The present value of $1 receivable at the end of the year based on the discount rate of 4% and 9% can be taken as you need that of 9%, you don't need that of 4%. So you have to show how the loan notes should be accounted for in financial statements at 1st December 2009. Now, the next, how much will be repaid now? The principal will be repaid at the end of the period or on maturity. The principal is 20 million. Principal is 20 million. These are the cash flows associated with these loan notes, convertible loan notes. Those are the cash flows associated with the convertible loan notes. So you cannot have, I've told you that you discount these cash flows. When you discount them to get their present value, the result obtained will be the liability component. The liability component will be the present value of these cash flows. So you can have a year, year one, 20, it was issued on 1st of January 2009. And when will it be convertible or uh, redeemed? It's 2011. 20, 2009, 2010, which is the second year, 2011, the third year. So cash flows now. 20, 2009, we have the interest of 800,000. Year 2010, interest of 800,000. 2011, you still pay interest of 800,000. Then that same 2011, the principal of, two mi of 20 million will be repaid. So these are the cash flows associated with the loan notes. So after that, you discount it. The discount factor has been given. The discount factor has been given. This is year one, year two, year three. Year one now. I've told you that you are going to use the present value as for the for discounting, not the coupon rate. The coupon rate will only be used to calculate the interest to be paid or cash flows. So discount factor at nine percent cost of capital for year one. We have zero point nine two. Zero point nine two. In year two, you have zero point eight four. In year three, you have 0 0.77, 0 0.77. So the present value of that, the present value of that, you have 800,000 times 0 0.92, and that will give us 736,000. Then you have 800,000 times 0 0.84, and that will give us C seventy-two thousand. We have eight hundred thousand times 0.77. That will give us C one C thousand. Twenty million. Twenty million times 0.77. That will give us fifteen point four million. When you sum it up, plus 616,000, plus 672,000, plus 736,000, total will be 17 million, 424,000. The reason why 
I use the same discount factor is because this is the same year. Interest payable in year three and the principal too will be repaid the same year. That is why I, I use the same discount factor for, for the two cash flows. So this is the liability component. Liability component. This is their liability. Then the gross loan now, or the cash flows or gross loans. The gross loans is 20 million. The residual, the residual, that is the remaining one, the difference between the liability component and the actual value of the loan. The difference is, when you subtract that, so the difference is 2 million, 576,000. This value is the equity component, equity. This will be shown as equity in the statement of financial position. Then this one is a liability. Then the liability component, you now apply the amortization table for that. You apply the amortization table for the liability component. So, to apply amortization table, you now have amortization table, amortization table. You have year, year, year one, year two, year three. That is 2001, uh, 2009, 2010, 2011. You have opening, opening balance, opening balance. Since it is elaborated, you have finance cost. Then. Then interest paid, then closing balance. This interest paid will be constant unless you are given different rates. Maybe the rate, the coupon rate in year one, maybe it is 10 percent, that of year two, 11 percent, year three, 12 percent. So that means it is then that it can vary. Otherwise, it will be constant. So, to apply the amortization table. The liability component is 17 million 424. Let me add three zeros. 17 million 424. Which is the liability component here. Then I've told you that the finance cost should be at the effective interest rate. The effective interest rate is 9%. No, it is the effective interest rate we use to discount it to get the liability component. The coupon rate is 4%. The interest payment should be at 4%. Then 9% of 17424. 17424 at 9%. That will give us 15. C, uh, okay, 1,568, 568. The coupon rate, 5% of 20,000. 5% of the actual value of the loans, not of the liability component. 5% of the actual loans, which is 20,000. 5% of 20,000. I mean, 4%, I mean, 4% of the actual values of the loan. 4% of 20,000. And that will give us 800. 800. So this plus this minus 800. 17, 424 plus 1568 minus 800. That will give us 18,192. That will be the opening balance for the second year, 18, 192. Then at 9%, that will give us 1637. Then 800. You add this and this, plus 18, 192. Then minus 800. 
That will give us 19 and 29. That will be the opening balance here, 19,029. Then, 19,029 at 9%. That will be 1,713. At the end of the year, you want to pay the principal of 20,000 and interest of 800. That will be total 20,800. So that is the amount that will be paid in year three, the interest plus the principal. If you have this 1,713, plus 19,029. That will be totaled 20,742. Now, if you subtract 20,800 minus 20,800, you'll be left with a difference of 58. The difference of 58 is as a result of rounding off. It's a rounding off error. So if you like, you may, you may reduce this to compensate for the a rounding off error. have equity, equity financial instrument, equity component is 2576, 2576, then we also have non-current liability, The liability component is 18192. That is statement of financial position extract. But in the statement of profit or loss, you only show your finance cost of 1568 under expenses. Statement of profit or loss for the year ended. Ended 31st December. 2009. So we now have finance cost, cost of 1568. 1568. So that's all. That is the extract of the statement of financial position.